This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Whenever the MLB All-Star break rolls around and starts to set in just how close the NFL is, just how close we are to having players on the field during training camps, which means this is one of our final chances to actually talk NFL player awards before training camps get underway. So what better time to talk some NFL? What better time to bring back Ryan Williams and pick his brain about the NFL award market over at FanDuel Sportsbook and try to identify where he sees value as of right now. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire. Joined here as mentioned by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, it is a pleasure to have you back on the show for today. It has been far too long. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing well, Jim. It's always a pleasure to be on covering the spread. I can't believe we're at MLB All-Star break. Uh, we only got a couple more Sundays here without football. It's just that time. It's it's that time. You 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 call me up. You you know you call in the reserves. You're like, hey, what's go what's going on? Let's get you on the show. Let's talk some futures. And I'm like, yes, that's this is what I've been waiting for, Jim. Inject it into my veins. Get me up. Um, no, man, it's it's all good fun. Um, I'm excited to be back in in the in the passenger seat with you and and to talk some shop as it relates to the NFL futures. It's not the reserves. We were saving the big guns. Got to rest them up before NFL season. You know, we got to right. we got to make sure we so that we don't wear you out before NFL. So this is all like planned, you know, NFL t- or MLB team saving their like all star starter, ramping them up throughout the year. We got to get you got to get you back up so we can have you in October when things really matter. So a pleasure to have you back on the show here for today. We're going to talk through the NFL awards markets. We'll talk overall strategy as far as like, because you are locking up bankroll for a long time, like how much of an edge you need to justify locking up bankroll until February. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about MVP, coach of the year, rookie of the year, and all that here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or over on Spotify. Also, do not forget all these shows are going up on the FanDuel YouTube page and on the FanDuel TV Plus app. If you got the FanDuel TV Plus app, uh, you can find it on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and Roku as well. You can check out us alongside Run It Back, Up and Adams, The Solo Shot, One Side is Back Post, All-Star Break as well, all on the FanDuel TV Plus app. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet $20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's $200 you can spend betting every line to over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All in an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use, plus... When you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel America's number one sportsbook. So sign up today and get $200 in bonus bets. FanDuel official partner of Major League Baseball must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only, $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 over the ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT, Indiana, 1-800-522-4700, or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia, call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here, visit gamblinghelplinema.org, or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Call one 878 hope or text hope Y in New York. Now, as I mentioned, Ryan, before diving into the actual markets and talking about the players we think may be undervalued for this year, 
I want to talk overall philosophy with you when it comes to betting futures, because if you bet a player award market right now, unless you cash out, basically the sports book has control of that money until February. And <laughs> that's a lot of time you could spend that money on something else. You could put it in a CD. I don't know, whatever you want to do. Um, that is a long time to lock up bankroll. So how much of an edge do you need in order to justify betting something that you know will not pay out until February? It, it's got to be a pretty pretty nice edge there. Uh, I, I will say you're talking to somebody who I, I have some bets on futures that I was looking through my through my account that happened on February 11th. You know because you are <laughs> getting you are getting long shots at the at that point yeah. in time if you feel like there is an edge or you feel like there's there's some situations to take advantage of. Um, the players I'll just mention uh, that I put futures on are yeah. um, Justin Fields uh, to win MVP, um, which those odds have already changed. He, I got him at 30 to one. He's now 20 to one. Um, Russell Wilson, I got him at 50 to one. He's now in the 40 to one range. Uh, and Aaron Rodgers, who was 25 to one going to potentially a different team at the time um, is, is what we thought. We didn't know where it would be, but probably a favorable situation immediately when he gets there. Uh, got him at 25 to one and he's now 16 to one. So like when you can take advantage of the market and, you know, do things in, in that nature, I think that that's always encouraging um, to be able to lock up some money when you think that there's going to be an advantage. Now, I was going to save this until later on, but this kind of leads me to a point that I was going to bring up with Jamar Chase from a couple years ago. So yeah. when we start getting into this time of the season, and it's always fun, right? Fourth of July rolls around. Everybody, you know, is thinking about, okay, so if I'm in, you know, dynasty leagues, I got to start thinking about, you, you know, drafts. Scott Fishbowl comes around, which is a big thing in fantasy. People are thinking about that. People are thinking about best ball. People are gearing up for August. And when that happens, we start to see the narrative train start to you know, start to come along. You got you got training camp, you got hard knocks, you got all of these things. And with Jamar Chase specifically a couple of years ago, when training camp was going on, what was the talk? Oh, this guy can't catch the ball. He has duck camps. Right. It's going to be rough for him. And that uh, that affected the market for him going into it. When he was drafted, he was one of the favorites to be rookie of the year. And then all of a sudden this stuff starts piling on and through the beginning of the season, like he, you were getting favorable odds in the 10 to one range and higher of this guy being rookie of the year. So when we have things like that, that happen where you're pretty sure the talent's there uh, or, or maybe you're, you're willing to bet on the talent there because of where this draft capital came in on a guy uh that's what makes it really exciting and where you can take advantage of the market i'm excited to go through some of these uh rookies with you jim because i do think there there are some discrepancies but this is the best time of the year jim oh, yeah. for people who you know want to play contrarian or want to take the long shots that's the only way that makes it worth it is if you take some of these long shot bets you kind of weigh out the outcomes and yes they're, they're going to be long shots like russell wilson had one of the worst years uh from a quarterback of his stature in recent memory last season Season. But, you know, you think about the coaching changes that are happening there. You think about the weapons that are still there in Denver. And if you're going to give me 50 to one odds on a guy who is formerly an MVP and can, you know, right the ship at any time, given the situation, like I'm, I'm willing to take those bets. So long story short, Jim, I think that if we're looking to lock up some money, we definitely want it to be bang worth the buck. Uh, yeah. when it comes to that and taking these long shots are very uh, valuable at this point in time and possibly something that you might end up forgetting if you get these long shot odds <laughs> when all of a sudden February rolls around and you right. see your bank account start to start to roll up. But I think the key thing that you did was you locked up players who on whom you would get closing line value and closing line value is kind of quantifying, putting like a number behind the edge that you have, which allows you to like justify locking up that bankroll. Like yep. basically with Justin Fields, like, okay, if he gets a weapon in the off season, his, his number will short. He gets DJ Moore, that number shortens. If Aaron Rodgers, I mean, he couldn't retire at that time, honestly, but if he go, right. gets traded and gets better weapons than what he had, his number will shorten. Russell Wilson, if he gets a better coaching situation, you know, uh, Sean Payton becomes his coach, you get closing line value. So I think that what you were doing was identifying markets where, it would shift in your favor, which is, again, just kind of getting a number value behind the value that you got. So again, like, let's say 
if you're comparing betting a player market versus again putting i don't know put i'm just going to use putting your money in a cd as an as an example <laughs> like this is like an investment decision because you can use that money in other areas but if you're going to get closing line value on it that is effectively growing that money because it's growing the expected value of what you put in to that market so i think that what you want to do is what ryan did is identify areas where a player's number may shorten and use that as an example that's also why the jamar chase example is pertinent because his number length, which was a, a way to dive in before it shortened once again, once they were actually on the field. So I think that identifying spots where you think the market will move is a pretty big, important factor if you're trying to justify locking up bankroll for that long. So let's talk about that MVP market. As you mentioned, the guys you've you've uh, you've already invested in have shortened already. So um, potentially no more value in those guys. I think Russell Wilson's still 40. So maybe you want to talk about that. But look at the MVP market as of right now. We got Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, and Patrick Mahomes all at seven to one. Ryan, with where things currently stand, any value for you in the MVP market at FanDuel Sportsbook? Yeah, so this is this is always a fun one because, you know, you look at the top and it, even funny to me, I guess maybe you say it's alphabetical order, but like Patrick Mahomes <laughs> always is just leap and bounds. Like I love, love Joe Burrow. Uh, absolutely yeah. love him this year. Like if you were selling guns to my head, putting money on one of these guys seven to one, I would be Joe Burrow all day. Um, I just love the Bingo yeah. outlook for this season. Josh Allen, uh, it is a little bit worrisome of the things that are kind of going on in Buffalo. I still trust the talent there. And so totally makes yeah. sense to me but i think those guys deserve to be uh just a little bit uh higher than jim judge allen but where it gets fun jim is just kind of thinking about situations here so i mean no it's it's talked about all all over the place but in case people don't know this is a quarterback award don't get caught up in the hype on some of these other guys like you, you can even see the quarterbacks i think it's uh until you get to a guy who did i see oh my gosh i can't like derrick henry um is 150 yeah uh Sam Howell <laughs> is a hundred like that this is the type of stuff that we're right. dealing with like Sam Howell <laughs> is, is higher than you know some of these electric guys but um because it's a quarterback award uh right. I think it's been since 2010 uh quarterbacks have won every year except for the Adrian Peterson year yep. which I believe was 2012 if memory serves me right um and so that's where I look at and so and you're also looking at teams who are successful because usually the quarterbacks come in around you know double digit wins for sure and so when we look at future win totals, that's kind of what I'm trying to parlay with. Now, I did talk about a guy like Russell Wilson. I, you know, that is a tough division there out in the AFC West. But if he's able to kind of put it together, um, it's already coming down to 40 to one. But that's still pretty nice odds and chunk of change for a guy um, who could who could be there uh, come come December, come January. The another another guy that I was looking at, Jim, um, which doesn't make me feel great about it, but just when we're talking about situations, if you look at Deshaun Watson uh, at yeah. twenty five to one, I will say, like earlier on um, this year, even I believe he was at forty to one, like in March. And so you're already starting to see the trend and it never makes you feel good. Brown's getting hype love. I mean, we remember that yeah. with Baker Mayfield, they were like one of the top five Super Bowl favorites, uh, just just always disgusting with Cleveland. But you're looking at the weapons, you're looking at what they've invested around him, you're looking at the amount of equity they invested into Deshaun Watson. And this is a guy in Houston who was electrifying and, a, you know, that there's a reason why they went out and got him. So at 25 to one, I do think that that's interesting there you know if you can say that they can keep up with Cincinnati and we don't kind of know what's going on with Baltimore um Pittsburgh's always going to be in the mix they're a tough opponent but we don't see them winning the division so I think Deshaun Watson um, is interesting but and then after that like after the Russell Wilson range there's nothing that really um yeah. excites me all too much um, just because it is like that win heavy award. Um, right. So I really think that you're looking um, kind of in that 20 to 40 to one range on any guys that you might feel comfortable with. Yeah. Regarding Deshaun Watson, I was talking about my NFL win total uh, model and going through that. And it did show value in the Browns um, as being a team that might be a bit undervalued by the market as a team. And that does correlate to this market, because like you said, you want to bet quarterbacks on teams that will win a lot of games. And if an NFL team is undervalued by the market, there is a good chance that the quarterback is also undervalued by that market. Now that thought does not apply to one guy I wanted to ask you about. 
uh, because I think that the Ravens are actually pretty appropriately priced in the in the in the, yeah. in the like win total market. But what they are, Ryan, is they're volatile in a good way. And I think that volatility in this market is a positive because we don't really know what Lamar Jackson will look like with Todd Monken as his offensive coordinator, with Zay Flowers in town, with hopefully a healthy Rashad Bateman. And I feel like the not knowing part is a massive bonus when it comes to Lamar Jackson. He's 15 to 1. Okay. I think if I were to, and I've not placed any MVP bets because I just, I feel very weird about locking up stuff for that long. So that's, that's why I've not done that personally. But if I won right now, Ryan, I'd have a not going Lamar Jackson just because we may see a more pass centric offense that Todd Monken may see a more like modern. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't want to diss their old <laughs> offense too much, but yeah. like less archaic offense. I feel like Lamar Jackson is the one who interests me most at 15 to one. Any interest for you and Lamar? Any thoughts for him at that number? Do you think it's pretty appropriate? Uh, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, it, it does feel appropriate. It does feel a little, uh, you know, I, I think that getting him in the, even the Dak Prescott range and and probably not Justin Fields, but like 18 to one would feel about right. I, there was so much yeah. hoopla going around Lamar Jackson and re-signing with the Ravens or what was going to happen there um, that I'm really shocked to kind of see it where it comes in, but the books are smart. So um, yeah. that's how they bait you in. Lamar Jackson's been a guy that I've bet for MVP. I think the past three se seasons, yeah. um, I just always love the situation that it's in. And yes, if he's going to be passing the ball more, like I don't even question his rushing ability. Like he can just really break things. If he does, yeah. you know, go out there and throw for over 3000 yards and ends up for rushing over a thousand yards, like he's capable of doing like record setting year that, why not take a chance on a guy like that? I do like their their offensive outlook. And we we know, again, that division is just going to be so competitive. Um, and that's the kind of stuff that I love betting on, Jim, is when, I, you know, I kind of know that it's going to be, you know, a, a battle um, yeah. all season long. And there's not really a clear favorite. I, I guess the Bengals would be. But um, it, just, it just always – adds into the narrative of that it's going to be competitive. These games are going to be exciting. And if Lamar Jackson is able to beat the Bengals twice in one season, like that's going to do a lot for his MVP odds. So yeah. um, that makes it fun for sure. We talked about three of the four quarterbacks in the AFC North. No love for Kenny Pickett. I'm not going to try to even talk you into that one at 40 to one. So let's just talk instead about the coach of the year market where Really yes. no favorite right now in the coach of the year market. Dan Campbell is 10 to 1. Sean Payton and Matt Eberflus, both 12 to 1. So no real runaway favorite in the coach of the year market, Ryan. When you look at this market specifically, anyone st stand out to you? Yeah, let's go back to the Ravens and talk about John Harbaugh, who comes in at 25 to 1 uh, to wow. win this. I actually... Not that I would prefer that over the 15 to one Lamar, because it's such a crapshoot when you're talking about coach of the year and things that can happen and how Brian Dable wins it last year and it could have easily gone to Nick Sirianni. Um, but, you know, I 25 to one for John Harbaugh, he, he's kind of been in the mix before um, you always you, again, when we're talking about narratives here, there's no bigger narrative. I, I don't feel like than with coach of the year, like the team has to be, you know, kind of upset in a way um it's coming out of nowhere insert brian dable um you have to be successful uh giants made the playoffs so um i, I do like getting um in the 20 to 1 range for this for this particular award because of all of that so i think you're looking at you know a guy like uh john harbaugh um it it, it is hard for me to like think about coach bill belichick winning an award like this but when you're yeah. thinking about 30 to 1 and you know if they were able to you know take the dolphins to the woodshed take the bills to the woodshed like that that could be interesting uh, but i always do look at like new coaches and the situations yeah. that they're in um even a guy like arthur smith who i th i thought would be really interesting I, of course a lot of people probably are thinking that that's why he's right. at 16 to 1 because that nfc south division is just absolute trash so um, if the Falcons are able to get something out of Ritter and, you know, really build around Bijan and the things that they have going on there, uh, that could be exciting. 16 to one is, is a favorable one that I would take um, outside of the 20 to one odds. I think Brandon Staley too has a little bit of merit to him at 20 to one. Um, the chargers, you know, with, with their outlook. And I, I don't, I don't know, you know, this also is a, a person, uh, 
it's a person driven award as far as like people voting for it, Jim. Right. So yeah. I don't know how many people really like or appreciate Brandon Staley <laughs> in the league with the risks and things that he's able to yeah. do. He's always getting blasted on blasted on social media and things like that for his decision making. So if it came down to it, I don't know if they'd be able to pull the trigger on somebody like him. But if he's able to do something with the Chargers, um, you know, you love Kellen Moore being there as the offensive right. coordinator um, with with uh, Herbert's outlook. I think that that has some merit to it as well. Yeah, Staley, you mentioned like the the aggressiveness and that that angered like the old school football people. But then last year angered all the nerds like me by being <laughs> weirdly conservative and just like odd and like bottling up this cyborg quarterback, refusing to let him through. I know it wasn't him as the OC, but like, you know, that's why I went to Kellen Moore and stuff like that. But he angered both the nerds and old school football, which is tough to do. So he managed to do that. And that definitely could be a detriment as far as uh, him in this market. The one guy I thought was kind of interesting is Dennis Allen, 30 to one, kind of the same thought process you were using with Arthur Smith, where NFC South is super wide open. He has a new quarterback in Derek Carr. And I think that Carr is yeah. very flawed as a quarterback, but also pretty big upgrade over the conglomerate of Taysom Hill and whatever uh, the Saints are running out there last year. So I could see Allen being somewhat interesting, not a first year head coach. It's, this is his second year at the helm, um, but kind of bucking that trend of, okay, this was Sean Payton's team that he managed yep. to be okay with and stuff like that. I think that one is kind of interesting, uh, but I think that the reason I, I haven't bet this, I think that this war award mark, this award is broken because the longest shot on the board is Andy Reed. Andy Reid is 50 to one <laughs> tied with Todd Bowles. And that does not yep. make sense. I know it like it does make sense as far as like actually betting this award, but this award is broken and I hate it. So I have not bet yep. it. I will not bet it. But Dennis Allen is somewhat interesting. I just like I stare at Andy Reid, right? And I'm like, he should be coach of the year every year. It's like not not quite Otani MVP levels, but like right. just give Andy Reid the, the award every year. It's wild. It's wild. Yeah. Those narratives, oh, wow. I tell you, they'll kill you. I know. They'll bite you. <laughs> Let's talk about the rookie of the year markets where things are not settled with a favorite because we got Willie Anderson at four to one on the defensive side of things. B. John Robinson three to one on the offensive side of things. But we do have favorites in both these departments. So Ryan, looking at both the offensive and defensive sides, which players do you think are undervalued most right now over at FanDuel? Yeah, I think it, if we're talking about offensive uh, side specifically, I think there could be a case for C.J. Stroud, and usually yeah. we're talking about double-digit uh, odds here uh, on on players like this. But when you're talking about rookie of the year, you know, quarterback coming in, Houston traded up for him, was thought he could possibly be the number one pick at one point, uh, nine to one. This has actually moved uh, back a little bit. Mm -hmm. He was coming in at the seven to one range early on this year. Uh, I think with the stuff that's going on in Houston and you know, kind of uncertainties there, that's kind of lend itself to that. Also with Anthony Richardson too, uh, the thought of Gardner and shoes starting the season, um, you know, has, has led him to kind of be pushed down as well. I don't think that, I'm sure a lot of people weren't even aware or sure that he was going to be starting at the season, even when he was drafted. So I think CJ Stroud does have some merit there. If he can kind of, you know, play all 17 and, you know, keep the Texans competitive. Uh, I definitely like that bet. And then we get into the receivers. Um, I think it's, you know, really interesting to see the receivers down as far as they are, you know, even, you know, Jackson, uh, Jordan, Quentin Johnson at 25 to one, like, you know, Keenan Allen's been banged up. Mike Williams has been banged up. If this guy is the, you know, healthy piece and we think Herbert's going to be, you know, a prolific passer with Kellen Moore there and the things that they do with three wide receiver sets or had done in Dallas and that comes to fruition with the chargers like 25 to one on a guy in, in a pass heavy offense, like sign me up for that all the time. I think Zay flowers even has some interesting merit to him. He's yeah. way down here. Uh, but you talking about a, a first round guy, Odell and Rashad Bateman's been banged up and he's been a fantasy darling, but if he's not the guy and Zay flowers is, I, I always find that interesting. And then we have to scroll down, Jim, keep scrolling <laughs> and get to that 50 to one range. Uh, my God, Jonathan Mingo, being oh, yeah. here like who is the number one receiver in carolina i i don't know at this point and i know that they you know invest the a top pick 
uh, in, in Jonathan Mingo there to go with Bryce Young, a rookie. You know, we talk about rookies and backup quarterbacks having rapports with, with some guys that they come in with uh, or on the units with. And if Jonathan Mingo ends up being that guy for Bryce Young through training camp, I think it's worth taking a shot. We're talking about tying up our money for a while, right, Jim? And so you yeah. definitely want to make it worth it at 50 to 1. Like, what you know, what do you have to lose? This guy could be explosive. He had some, he had some stuff that caught my eye uh, on tape when looking at draft profiles. So, I definitely like the long shots there. When you're talking about the defensive rookie of the year, um, this is one where, you know, I really think that anybody who plays in IDP leagues or you know, <laughs> really invested in the defense side should get involved in this because yeah. we always see it, there's just not enough knowledge around these guys from a general fantasy standpoint. So you tend to see um, these guys have longer odds than most because people are just betting the top heavy favorites. But um, I never usually dabble um, in this range. But if there's somebody that kind of catches my eye early on um, before the numbers start changing too much, I will probably dabble a little bit. You know, Micah Parsons, uh, a lot was going on with Dallas at that time as far as social media goes and the coverage of him. And he was just so excited. I think they were on hard knocks uh, the year he he was drafted so um or uh, not hard knocks amazon it was an amazon prime like yeah. show and he yeah. was getting hyped up and so that was a fun one to kind of you know be be on with but uh but yeah i don't have any i don't have any really strong reads at the defensive rookie of the year i just know that these odds it, it's same with defensive uh player of the year they tend to be very top heavy so if you have any uh investment or if you keep track of what's going on with the market i think that there's definitely an advantage there for for people yeah i do want to go back to stroud here quickly uh you mentioned him at nine to one and i think that the point you made about like you know we need big value to justify locking a bankroll this long is probably the best point against cj stroud because nine to one mm, how much value is there actually but i do think that there is enough here to consider him because that offensive line in houston is actually not bad honestly um it's like decently okay there's a solid amount of continuity there the pass catchers are fine um but they're not terrible i wouldn't say i'm not i'm very out in robert woods but like they've got some other guys who at least flashed last year they did add dalton schultz as well so uh yeah. there is a bit of yeah. that so i think that stroud is pretty interesting at nine to one i like stroud a lot coming out i was flummoxed when there was so much steam against him uh in the nfl draft rumor mill where he was suddenly potentially going to slide outside the first round i was ecstatic when he was taken second overall so i believe in him and i believe in the talent i think this offense is actually not as bad as perception potentially and he gets to play all of his home games indoors along with one of his row or at least one of his divisional row games in Indianapolis. So a lot of games indoors, which is a plus two, same thing for Richardson uh, in the exact same division. But I do find Stroud pretty interesting in nine to one. I think that if I were looking at a bet to place, think that Richardson or Stroud would be the guy I would turn to there. What about all the other awards, Ryan? Because we've got plenty offensive player of the year, defensive player of the year across those markets right now. Any other bets you like at this moment? Yeah, I think if we're just, on that same vein with rookies and looking at the rookie receiving yard leader. Uh, yeah. I think that, you know, that's kind of why Jonathan Mingo caught my eye because he's five uh, on the rookie receiving yards list at 12 to one. Yeah. And then all the way down at 50 to one to be rookie of the year. That just, it's kind of a big discrepancy for me that I like to call out. Um, I do like Zay flowers at 10 to one too. Um, just if we can get more uh, deep deep ball passing from Lamar and have the big yeah. playability and he's on the field, I, I do find that uh, to have some merit to it. So th those were the two guys that I was looking at there, just at their prices. Um, other than that, for, for futures at this point, it's not really um, too much for me. I'm still looking at win totals. Uh, yeah. on themes and, and letting those come to fruition. The Browns being at nine and a half and plus money um, is, an, is an interesting one, especially if I'm going to bet Deshaun Watson at MVP. Um, teams to make the playoffs, you know, Bears are plus money there. Um, you know, if you're betting in Illinois, they actually have their own section uh, because of so many people <laughs> getting traction on them. 
Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is the fun time where, you know, it, it's really just about dialed in, being dialed in uh, to beat reporters, being dialed in when training camp starts and kind of seeing where things happen. And also like where the where things are getting hyped up, if you don't have a good feeling on, oh, no, I don't really see this coming to fruition, then kind of let the market play out. Let those guys, you know, get their numbers changed and, and then take take shots on the guys um, that you maybe feel a little bit more confident in. Um, so I always find, I always find this to be a fun time to get future bets in, in July and August. Um, and then we don't think, then we don't think about it. We just set it and forget it. Uh, almost like our lineups, Jim, that we talk about where, you know, you get in these long shot odds right. and just kind of let them sit and you won't even be thinking about them come October, November. And then you go back and check and you're like, wow, like I actually had this guy <laughs> at, at 40 to one, you know, this is great. Or man, I put a bet on this guy. What the hell was I thinking? Um, <laughs> it, but it's always fun to be able to, to go back and, and look at some of those things come to fruition. Um, very exciting. I did have a two MVP bet his second year. So I've had the, what the hell is I thinking moment for sure. So we've, I've been there for sure. I understand what you're saying. Uh, holy and significantly for sure. All right. That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. We'll be back once again tomorrow. We're we'll talk uh, some NASCAR in New Hampshire for this week. We'll have baseball back on Friday with Pitching Ninja joining us once again as well. We want to give a big thank you to Ryan Williams for joining us. As mentioned, uh, find Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, I will see you in person on Sunday for a yes, uh, fantasy football draft. Looking forward to that. But until then, uh, appreciate the time and uh, good luck looking through that portfolio, portfolio once again. Absolutely. As always, Jim, excited to get the call. Can't wait to get after it with you uh, this football season and can't wait to see you on Sunday, my friend. Looking forward to it. You can find me on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast also check us out on FanDuel's youtube page and the FanDuel tv plus app we'll talk to you all once again tomorrow this has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel podcast network